choir is coming with a selection entitled, I Cannot Tell It All. Tell it all. Hallelujah. Right now it's time to hear the word of God. We're going to bring to you our pastor and the person of Suffolk and Bishop Charles L. Smith. Let's receive him with a hearty praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, choir musicians, and everyone. We thank you for your great contribution to the service today. 
Amen. We've had, we're having some good church today. Amen. I said we're having some good church today. <laughs> Amen. Somebody said, oh, what is bad church? Well, bad church is when you have to fight the devil all the way through. <laughs> That's bad church. But when you feel a free spirit in the house of the Lord, see the saints clapping their hands and praising God and enjoying the service, we having a good service. Yeah. Amen. God is good. Thank you. Amen. Let us turn in the word of the Lord to the book of, amen, Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. And when you have it, would you stand please? We're going to read verses 1 through 7. Followed by verse 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. We will read all together. All together we will read. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Verses 13 and also 14. But evil men and, and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity today to tell our audience the things that you have spoken to us. I thank you, Lord God, for how you help us as we preach and teach your word. We pray that the words that go out today will find good soil and land upon good hearts. Hallelujah and will bring forth fruits of righteousness for the glory of God. Bless those that are hearts are bowed down in sorrow today. I pray for their comfort. I pray for those who are burdened today because of some situation that they are going through. I pray for those that are on the ark of safety that they will be saved and that the Lord will bring them in before it is too late. I pray for Zion Temple, First Pentecostal Church as a whole, that we will be a soul-saving station and a place where men and women can come and find the salvation of the Lord. Use us, Lord, for your honor and for your glory. Let the things that we do reach out into our city and into the hedges and highways and byways that it might bring in everyone who needs salvation. I pray for those who are sick in the hospital, that you would touch and heal them. Those that are sick at home, that you would heal them. Those, hallelujah, that are behind prison walls, that you would save them. Be with us, Lord, as we go forth in the word. Use us for your honor and for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence 
of the Lord. Our scripture text for today is verse 5 of 2 Timothy chapter 3, which says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And verse 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And our subject for our message today is winning our battle with the last days. Winning our battle with the last days. Hallelujah. In the Bible, we have read one of the scriptures that tell us about the last days. The last days are the time period that existed between the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ until his actual second coming back to the earth again. There will also be a time of his appearing when he will appear and take the church out of the earth. Those days and those times will be a man different from other times that have been in times past. We have many scriptures, and I do not, I'm not going to try to give you all of them, but if you look in the 24th chapter of Matthew, some of them are there. If you look in the 21st chapter of Luke, some of them are there. If you look in 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 7, some of them are there. And they are scattered throughout the Bible. Hallelujah. And many people have said, amen, recently, I wonder why we have so much violence in the earth. Hallelujah. The Lord already predicted that it would come. We have earthquakes and national disasters that destroy many lives. And somebody said, I wonder why that happened. But the Lord said that that would come. Hallelujah. We have false Christ and we have people who are teaching people the wrong way. Hallelujah. 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 We have many people that are being led away from the truth and believing doctrines that are not correct. Hallelujah. First Timothy 4 and 1 said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Hallelujah. And all these things are facing the church. And we as the children of God who know the truth and believe the truth and have been given the truth, we have the responsibility to stand up for what we know is right and correct. Amen. We know more than many church members. Hallelujah. We know more than many individuals who uh, have been to theological seminary. Hallelujah. Because God has revealed to us the truth of God. Hallelujah. 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 And I came to tell you that there is a war going on, but we just got to fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not with guns and tanks and other weapons. It's not with the atomic or the hydrogen bomb. Hallelujah. It is not with troops and soldiers walking through the city, but it is with our mind. Hallelujah. Satan wants your mind. Satan wants control over all of you alls and my alls and us as all mine. Hallelujah. 
Because he knows if he can control our mind, he has us. Ooh, if he can get in my head and give me something to change my mind from spiritual to carnal, he has destroyed us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And along with the thinking of the world and the flow that is going on in the world, it's hard to keep stability in our mind because it looks like everything is going in one direction. Hallelujah. Paul said in our text that there would be perilous times will come. I looked up the word perilous and it means danger or dangerous time. We'll be living in dangerous times. Yes, we will have service. Yes, we will praise the Lord. Yes, we will sing and shout. Yes, we will give God glory. But every day that we live, every day that we exist, we keep moving through dangerous times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My wife was saying today about she got some advertisements on her email about Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I'm going to be good. I, maybe I ain't supposed to tell this. I don't know. And she said, they don't have my email. I said, yes, they do. They got it somewhere. But I didn't give it to them. You don't have to. It's in the cloud. Hallelujah. And maybe you ain't even thinking about Black Friday and Cyber Monday tomorrow, but they want to put something in your head to make you want to crowd the highways, go to the stores, jam the parking lots, and stand outside until the doors open. So you can get it. Seen somebody shaking their head, not me. <laughs> Maybe the rest of them people going to lay out there all night in tents trying to get a 65-inch TV for $279. Not me. Not me. But you're being bombarded just like me by advertisements and email and pop-up things that come on your computers and on your smartphones and on your telephone. Hallelujah. You say, how did they get my address? I don't know, but there must be a list somewhere for all the charities that are in the United States of America because I got some from people I don't even know who they are. What are they trying to do? They're trying to get into your head. They're trying to get into your mind. And the thrust and flow of the time is taking people out of the church and away from Bible class and away from the services, hallelujah, and away from Sunday school for other things. I know it's going to get quiet. I had to cook my food for Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I couldn't get up on Thanksgiving morning. Well, you missed a great service because the power of God and this, we had a little remnant, but the power of God was so strong in this church you could cut it with a knife. Testimonies off the hook. Uh, 
I know you understand off the hook. I ain't, that ain't nothing. Maybe that's not even the right word to say. But there is a battle going on and there is a war going on to try to get us to conform to what is going on in the world. The world will go this way because the Bible says so. The world will perform and fulfill the last days because the Bible says so. Hallelujah. But Paul said 19 things in this first text that we read. Those are things that we have to turn away from. The church can never just have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. There must always be salvation in the church. There must always be healing in the church. There must always be deliverance in the church. We're not going through the motions. We're not going because it's time for the broadcast. We're not going because this is what we do every Sunday. But Lord, somehow, some way, I know that I know that devil trying to get their mind. Lord, give us a breakthrough. Ooh. Help us to win the battle for my mind. Help us to win the battle of the ages. Don't let me become a lover of myself more than a lover of God. Don't let me become a boaster. Don't let me become covetous. Keep my mind. Keep my mind. Don't let me walk in pride and be a blasphemer. And don't let me be disobedient to my parents and disrespect them. Don't let me be unthankful and unholy. Don't let me be so hard. I have no natural affection. I don't even smile. I just look at them. All right. All right. We got some hard people in the 21st century. Hard people in the last days. You look at them and they just look back at you. So what's wrong with the people today? Uh, whenever you would smile at them, they would smile back at you. Whenever you would say, how are you today? You would at least get a response. Or, 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 their minds are being controlled by another force. And I know what I'm preaching about. I was in traffic yesterday and got blowed on two times because I wasn't moving fast enough. They went around me, went down to another place and turned in. They wasn't in no hurry to get to their, whatever they was doing. They was telling me, get out the way so I can go. Y'all don't hear me? I know I'm slow. I know. I know I walk slow. Talk slow. Somebody said I was the slowest talking person ever. So, but I'm going to be me. This is my DNA. I hope everybody likes it. But. <laughs> Hallelujah. In such a large hurry, you got to blow your horn loud as you can. Say, man, get out of my way. Uh, Y'all ain't had that happen. 
You stop for the red light so you don't get smashed by the person who came through the red light and they blow on you again. Hallelujah. Our mind. Our mind. Our minds are being bombarded by these 19 things that will happen in the last day. Hallelujah. You'll have fierce people. Those that hate other people that do good. You'll have traitors. You'll have heady people. High-minded people. People who love pleasures more than they love God. So what happened to them people? Well, they're fulfilling, ooh, hallelujah, Matthew chapter 24. And I believe verse 10, he said, because iniquity doth abound, the love of many will wax cold. don't love God like they should. And they don't love man like they should. There is a force, church, that has come to wipe our minds clean of everything that we believe and have held dear to us down through the years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just going to preach it. I mean, I get a bunch of hallelujah. But I'm going to preach it because I'm worried. I'm worried. I am deeply concerned about your mind. You can lose your spiritual mind. Oh, oh they ain't going to get me. They ain't going to get me. They already got you. Because any time we know the truth of God and don't do it, they got our mind. Any time we would love pleasure more than God, we are in trouble. I would rather be home watching the football game than coming to church. I would rather be in my house with my feet propped up, drinking coffee and eating pork and pie than coming to church. And when it comes time for church and somebody said, are you going to the house of God tonight? Nah, I don't think so. I'm going to stay home. I'm not talking about people that are sick. I'm not talking about people that have things that keep them home. I'm talking about losing your desire to come to the house of God. Losing your desire for the word of God. Something or someone has your mind. In the last days, there will be a form of godliness. But they will deny the power thereof. They'll have the program down so well that they could be at home and they know what's going on next. They're going to have Sunday school. I'm sorry. They're going to have prayer at 9, 9 a.m. to 10, 15. They're going to be Sunday school from 10, 15 until 11, 10 or 11, 15. There will be prayer from 11, 15 until morning worship. But the uh, praise team will start after the ministers of the church has the scripture reading and the prayer. Choir will sing its first song next, and following the choir, we will have the announcement.
after the announcements, we will have the offering. After the offering, we will prepare ourselves for the broadcast. The broadcast leader will come up and introduce himself and say it's time, saints, for us to begin to pray because the broadcast is getting ready to go forth. Choir will sing one song and then the pastor will be introduced and get up and preach the word. After the word, we will have the altar call and maybe about 1.30 we'll be going home. Form of God. We know how to do things. We know how to carry on a program. You could have five people in this church bond together and say we're going to have a program and it'll happen because we have leaders. We have people in here who know how to do things. But I get about six or seven amen. But if we deny the power thereof, it is only mere formality. The power to operate in the spirit comes from a relationship with God himself. Oh. Jesus said in the 50th chapter of John, Without me, you can't do nothing. You might be able to sing, but you can't sing with the anointing. You may be able to preach, but you can't preach without the anointing. You may be able to lay on of hands with oil, but no healings will come forth. No demons will be cast out, because without me, You can do nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the last day, we got to win the battle over these things that are pulling us down. Those things that are sapping our spiritual strength away from us. Those things which are causing us to become in apathy and ooh, hashada, and drift over into humanism and all of these complacency and all of these things that are in the world today. Amen. Lord, stir my heart. Lord, stir my mind. Help me to go back to the basic thing that have brought me to where I am today. Take me back where I might believe. Hallelujah. What happened to me, Lord? I don't hardly fast anymore. And I have no physical affliction to make me not fast. I hardly ever pick up my Bible until it's time to come to church. Everything that we allow to happen in our life is either going to make us spiritual or carnal. Everything. If we hang on the spiritual side, we will have power with God. It's dunamis power, it's delegated power. It's not exclusive power because that is the power that made us the sons of God and the children of God. Ooh, I don't know about you, but when I pray for somebody, I want to see a change. I want to fast and pray at least once, maybe twice a week and try to get my mind off of eating a whole bunch of food and sweets that I don't need and drinking two tons of coffee 
And I want to get my mind on Jesus. I want the Lord to speak to me. I want the Lord to talk to me. Lord, I ain't heard nothing from you in a while. Come by, Lord. Speak to my soul, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Guide me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I want you to help me. Maybe y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but when I don't hear from the Lord for a long time, I begin to say, Lord, what's wrong? I haven't heard this week like I heard last week. Every time the devil try to put crazy stuff in my mind, I tell him, get a shit and get away from me. I ain't going there. I, didn't, I came out of that. I ain't going back in it. I've been delivered. I've been set free. Hallelujah. I'm not going to get bound by the flesh. And I'm not going to get bound by the devil anymore. Because I'm free. I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. Paul said in our text, in verse 13, but evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to make one point here the world is not going to get any better There's no candidates in either party that is going to change the situation that is in our world. We might even get somebody that's worse than what we have now. Y'all said, oh Lord, I hope not. But it's coming. People have become so evil in the 21st century that the only one that is really going to stop them is God. Yes. 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 He's the only one that's going to bring this kingdom down. He's the only one that's going to destroy the works of the devil. He is the only one that is going to clear the way of, oh, shut up, of righteousness. But the more that people get away with and think that God ain't going to do nothing about it, the worse they become. They're so smooth and so slick. Because the IRS don't catch them more. Because something doesn't happen to send them to prison doesn't mean that they didn't do nothing wrong but they they wiggled around through the system and somehow did not get caught but there is a day when God will judge the world he will judge them by Jesus Christ Oh, hallelujah. Nobody can do wrong and get by. But evil men will wax worse and worse. They'll just keep on deceiving people and being deceived. Hallelujah. Mm. So if I live the life before them, it's going to change them. No, the gospel message is the only thing going to change. They can't come unless the Spirit draws them. If their heart ain't right, they ain't coming. If it's too hard, it ain't coming. If it's stony, it ain't coming. If it's thorny, it ain't coming. Is that where you get all of that? Well, the seed fell on four different kinds of ground, which represents four different kinds of hearts. 
may have 200 people in here right now or more, but very few will get a positive response to the word of God. Because of their heart. It's not nothing against the vessel that the Lord has ordained and brought into the midst to bring the word. Nothing against that. It's the heart. I can preach till I'm ready to fall out in the floor. If somebody don't want to move, they ain't going to move. If they don't want to come, they ain't going to come. I know ain't is bad language, but that's all I know to say they ain't coming. Hallelujah. Unless God raises them up. Unless God puts some thorns under them and send them some trouble and send them some heartache and kill half of their family. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I feel it, church. I feel strongly about this message. This is, this is not an indictment against anybody. I'm talking to myself too. Lord, don't let me get so easy going and complacent that I don't feel like doing nothing but just going along with what is going on and Make sure all that is taken care of. But Lord, put a stir in my heart. Speak to my mind. Look into the secret part of me and see if you can find something that I'm not thinking about. Maybe through thought or deed, I'm doing something that I should be doing. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Hallelujah. Turn the light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out. Take it out, Lord. Strengthen me, Lord. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be right you know when I'm wrong you know where I go you know where I belong you know what I do you know my secrets too search me search me search me search me Search me, Lord. Don't let the devil get in my head, Lord. Don't let pride get in my head, Lord. Don't let peace and prosperity get in my head, Lord. Don't let popularity get in my head, Lord. When I hear a certain name, I say, oh, that's me. That is me, but it's what God has done for me because he's been better to me than I've been to my own self yes, Woo, Jesus. Jesus. a lot of old men have failed God when they got old Mm. Solomon failed God when he got old. So what happened to him, Pastor? He had a thousand wives. That's right, says Lord have mercy. <laughs> I could never picture any man taking care of a thousand women. Right? picture that at all. We got some good ones. And 
I ain't being nasty. I'm just talking. Hallelujah. The Bible said in 1 Kings, I believe, maybe 2 Kings, chapter 2, that the women turned his heart away from God. He built altars to false gods in the temple. He built them houses so they could commit idolatry. He spent his money on satisfying strange women. God got angry. said, I know I promised you, David, that there would always be Somebody in your house to carry on your dynasty. But I'm cutting Solomon off. I'm cutting his house off. Because he knew what the truth was. But he let all those pretty strange women get in his head. I want your sister to hit me in the head now, please. Be good to me. I'm not talking about men and women. I'm talking about things that can make you lose the war. Things that can make you lose the battle. Many good men have been brought down. Oh, hallelujah. To a piece of ashes. From things that they did. Because somebody tempted them and pulled them down by the help of the devil. Ooh. I'm going to quit. I don't want nobody mad at me. But it is true. He told Timothy. I want you to win your battle with the last days. Now this is what I want you to do. I want you to go back to what you learned in the beginning. I ain't talking about it. No man, no personality. But the truth of God's word, regardless of who the vessel was, I want you to go back to where, ooh, hallelujah, you first believed. Remember the ones who taught you Remember the ones who gave you the truth. And when you find that spot, forget about the evil men, forget about the seducers, forget about the 19 conditions of the last days, turn away. And continue thou. In the things which thou hast learned. And the things that you have been assured of. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. That from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Told Timothy, do not be influenced by what you see. Don't let the things that you hear bother your mind. Hallelujah. 
Don't let it get in your head. Don't let it stay in your head. Because you were taught the right way. You have walked thus far in the right way and it ain't no time to get off the straight and narrow path and the word of truth and believe another gospel which is not really another. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 1 and 5, he said, When I call to remembrance the unfailing faith, the genuine faith, uh, honest to goodness faith. <laughs> Woo. The faith that can keep you in the storm. The faith that can give you the right direction. The faith that can keep you thinking the right way. It's in you. I said it's in you. It's in you, Zion. I'm not preaching to somebody that's got to get it. You already got it. But I'm preaching, whoo, hallelujah, that you got to win the battle. With the last days, you got to put up a defense against the thing that could change your mind. Which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois. And in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that it, that I am persuaded that in thee also is in you, Timothy. I said it's in you, Timothy. It was in your grandmother, Lois. She started with him when he was just a young child. Didn't she do it, church? She started teaching him about God and about the Holy Scriptures. When it says the Holy Scriptures, they're talking about, amen, the law and the prophets and the Son. Those three areas were called the Holy Scriptures. Hallelujah. 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 In 2 Thessalonians 2, 14 and 15, this may be all. He said, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, Stand fast. Hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by epistle. Hallelujah. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father which have loved us, have given us everlasting consolation and good hope. Through grace. Last one. Comfort your hearts. And establish you. Catch this. In every good word and work. Hallelujah. Hold fast. Hold fast. To the tradition. Which ye have been taught whether by word or by epistle. Hallelujah. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. We must. I said we must win the battle over the last day. I got enough material up here to go for two more hours, but I'm not going to do it. Maybe three. It's a big subject. I'm just trying to make it simple 
and use maybe two or three scriptures and see if you can get them real good because if I give you 15, you'd have to write them down because you probably wouldn't remember it. No pun intended. Please do not get mad at the messenger bear. He comes in love and he's coming in peace. Hallelujah. Let's strive to keep the devil out of our head. Let's work hard. I mean, really diligent. I'm serious about what I'm saying. He always trying to get in our head. But we should know if we know the truth that is in the word of God. Every time the devil come, there should be a word that is already hid in our heart to work on it. If he comes with pride, oh hallelujah, you can handle it. If he gets something going on in the flesh, you can handle it. They that live after the flesh shall die. I think I'm done. It's getting real quiet. This is good. Saints, you should be so strong that Satan cannot bring nothing to you to change your mind about the truth that is in God's name. Hallelujah. And when he drives his car up, tell him you cannot park in front of my house. There is no place reserved for you in front of my house. There's no welcome mat out for you outside of my door. Stay out. Don't park. Go somewhere. Because this child of God, this saint of God, is not going to allow you to get in my head. Because I got the Holy Ghost. And I got the power to become a son of God. And I have the power to work for God. Y'all going to help me win the battle? We hope and pray that you will come and be with us in our service. You and your family are welcome to come and worship with us here in Zion Temple. May God bless you. May he strengthen you is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.